Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Because I have been delivered. Because I am delivered. I'm a child of God. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Therefore, Therefore, I'm a partaker of eternity. I'm a partaker of eternity. Right now. Right now. Let my eye of understanding. Let my eye of understanding. Receive enlightenment. Receive enlightenment. Let me gain understanding. Through the explanations of the word of God. Say a living amen three times. Please take your seat. I felt like we should get into some prayers and uh, ministrations. But I want to share a thought with us. And uh, please pay attention because this is really what you need to cooperate with God. This is what really what I need to cooperate with God. Remember, he that keepeth Israel does not sleep, nor slumber. So God is 24 hours awake, alert, doing one particular assignment just to keep watch over you, just to make sure you are kept by his power so before i go on project for me get psalms 121 from this one i will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord which made the heaven and the earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. That's to show you that God is 100% awake just to keep you. Now, and this God we're talking about is a, the creator of heavens and the earth. Let me give us the explanation of the God I'm referring to. I'm not referring to this man made gods. I'm not talking about all the. Well, they are not gods. They are unclean spirits. That because people lack understanding of who they are, they started worshiping them and they took the place of a god over them. But when we talk about something is a god, we mean that thing is the creator. Which means God by nature is the creator of all things, but he himself is created by nothing. So God created everything, but he himself is not created. They call it in Latin the encosas you. It means he that created all things, but nothing created him. So God is the source of everything, but he actually came out of himself and therefore he is not limited to time and circumstances or everything he created he is the master can i hear you say amen yeah. so i'm referring to the one that has the ability to do all things he has the ability to do whatever that man requires him to do and secondly this god i'm talking about is the one that cannot lie when we say that God cannot lie, get, get Titus, Titus 1. Titus 1. Get from verse 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness in hope of eternal life which god that cannot lie promised before the world began this god we're talking about is one that what cannot lie cannot lie means that he doesn't have the ability to lie just like you and i we choose not to lie but god does not have a choice not to lie because even the ability to make that choice not to lie is not there I will explain that 
as a human being I am, I say, okay, I will not lie. I will make that church not to lie. But God does not make a church not to lie because even that choice, even the ability to make a church not to lie is not there because he doesn't have the ability to make that choice. His nature cannot make that choice because he cannot lie. So God does not have it as a moral quality. I have it as a moral quality. But God has it as his capacity. God has it as his ability. God has it as his nature. So that even if God said today, I want to lie, it, it is impossible for him to lie because he can't make that choice. He cannot struggle not to lie because he cannot lie. He can only say the truth. So God cannot not but say the truth because he doesn't have a choice not to say the truth. He doesn't have a choice not to lie. And that God is the one who says, he that keepeth you does not sleep, nor slumber. It that means God is present. God is 24 hours around. So it is not the presence of God that is missing. It is not the willingness of God that is missing. It is men, you and I, there is something on our own end that is not in cooperation or in sync or in alliance or in partnership with God that cannot lie. So I want to share briefly with you that you have been delivered. Amen. You have been delivered already. Amen. And he who cannot lie made that promise and has fulfilled it. Okay. Now, first of all, get Acts 13. Acts 13. Get to us from verse 31. And he was seen, Jesus. He was talking about Jesus' resurrection. He said, after resurrection, Jesus was seen of many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem who are his witnesses unto the people and we declare unto you glad tidings or good news and what is the good news how that the promise which was made unto the father okay and now we here we are here to bring you this good news tell your neighbor this good news <laughs> The promise was made to our ancestors. There was a promise God made to our fathers. He made that promise to Abraham. He, made, he said to Abraham, In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. He made that promise to Micah by saying, Somebody is going to come out of eternity and come into time, and he shall be the ruler over my people. He made that promise to Isaiah and said that all of you have walked astray, but the Lord God had laid on him the iniquity of us all by whose stripes we are healed and so he made the promises to our fathers moses said in, in deuteronomy 18 from verse 15 to 19 moses said that okay put that one up among promises put that deuteronomy 18 from verse 15 Moses continued, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. From among your fellow Israelites, you must listen to him. Yes. For this is what you yourself requested of the Lord your God. When you were assembled at Mount Sinai, you said, Don't let us hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, or see his blazing fire, for we will die. Then the Lord said to me, What they have said is right. I will raise up a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth. And he will tell the people everything I command him. 19. I will personally deal with anyone who will not listen to the messages the prophet proclaimed on my behalf so that was a promise somebody was coming and that when that person comes he's going to be the conclusion of all my messages whatever i want to say he will say it finally and uh, anybody who will not listen to him i will personally deal with him 
and this messenger this thing this prophecy finally the bible now declares that that message where we read in acts 13 that that prophecy which god gave that finally god has fulfilled that prophecy how by sending jesus christ go back to that acts 13 again acts 13 read from verse 32 32 and we declare unto you the god news how that that promise which god made unto the fathers that promise he made 33 god has now fulfilled it for us can i hear you say amen, amen. their descendant by raising jesus this is what the second psalm says about jesus you are my son today i have become your father so the promise god made that a deliverer was coming a savior was coming who will deliver israel and who will deliver as many as will put their trust in him the bible now declares that that promise is no longer a promise it is now fulfilled god has fulfilled it unto us their children by the resurrection so resurrection of jesus from the dead is the only indication we have that the promise of god which he made to the fathers that god has fulfilled them for us and since god has already fulfilled the promises for us it means god is owing nobody any promise to fulfill god is doing what there is nobody god is is owing any promise because the scripture says that promise he made to the fathers he fulfilled it to us their children by the resurrection so resurrection is a proof that by whose stripes you have been healed resurrection is a proof that the power of darkness over your life has been destroyed resurrection is a proof that God has taken you away from Satan's kingdom and has brought you into his own kingdom in Christ resurrection is a proof that the authority of the devil over your household and over your life and over your business that that authority was not only destroyed it was taken away the only proof we have is the resurrection if jesus had not been raised from the dead we are still in our sin and we are still bound to satan's kingdoms so resurrection is a proof and i want to share with you a few things that's why i say you are delivered already now if you are delivered already the question should norm normally come as people who are human beings who are controlled by senses since i am delivered then why am i still under demonic attacks why am i why are they still oppressing me why is it that when they project anything it works against me or when they make any plan and carry it out it works against me am i still the delivered the answer is absolute yes you are the delivered so i'm only giving you the information of who you are now when you gather that knowledge of who you are and begin to function in the reality by sustaining that consciousness then everything around you that are designed by satan and circumstances to redirect your thinking will align because once your mindset and actions are aligned then everything against you will follow your alignment to produce the result that is the way this kingdom works it doesn't work okay okay put up john john 8 31 and 32 i declare to you you have been eternally freed in the name of jesus the authority of the enemy over you has ended yes then jesus said to those jews which believed on him if you continue in my word then are ye my disciples my matatis indeed are you learners indeed my followers indeed now listen to verse 32 and you shall know what okay everybody read it louder one two three go 
shall know the truth. Okay, read it again. Don't rush. Just read it a little bit slow. One, two, three, go. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you. Okay, just read it as though you read in between line. Don't rush. And you shall know the truth. And the truth. It means God has set you free. But if you want to make yourself free, submit to learning the knowledge of the truth. Making free is experiences. Setting free is what God has done for you. A done deal. For example, if somebody credits your account with one million, the money is already set to your account. Am I right? Is it your money? Is it in your account? Yes, but that the money is in your account and you don't know how to withdraw, is it going to come into your experience? Yes, so rejoicing over the money in your account is good. But the second part of rejoicing is the main rejoicing celebration. Knowing how to withdraw, knowing how to experience. When Jesus died, was buried and was raised, he sets everybody free. But when you sit down to learn this knowledge of the freedom you have in Christ and begin to believe it and walk in it, then you will make yourself free. So making free is your experience reporting the setting free. So, but what if you don't have, because this freedom does not work because Jesus has set you free. It works because you know it. So it doesn't work because you are free. It works because what? So if you don't know it, there will be no working. If you don't know, that's why what some people don't know Christianity is not all about somebody praying for you. We will pray for you. But Christianity is much more you knowing the truth for yourself. Because the pastor may not always be there. Or that brother may not always be there. But when you have the knowledge of that truth, you will know what to do. Am I communicating? It is that knowledge of the freedom of truth. That knowledge of truth. That knowledge is what Jesus expects us to know. To become disciples indeed. So there is no witch that has authority over you. But if you don't have the knowledge of your freedom from witchcraft, even though you are free, but because you lack knowledge, your ignorance will be your authorization. There is no wish, there's no wizard that has right over you. Let me show you two or three places we normally read here. But it's not quoting it that works, it is knowing it that works. Okay. Get Colossians 1. Verse verse 12 and 13 now my essence of teaching you before praying is that I want you to see the true position of things then start meditating don't mind the experience just begin to meditate and accept leave experience alone meditate and accept keep accepting this is so you meditate and accept after a while let that meditation become your position in your consciousness then from that consciousness begin to pray and act you begin to see results okay listen, listen to this giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet the father has made us has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the sense in light yes now listen to that verse who has the father in christ has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son he has delivered us he has when you study bible 
pay attention to the tenses don't always say amen because somebody is saying something say amen because it is in alignment with the finished work very important if somebody tells you because of jesus god is going to forgive your sin tomorrow you may say amen but that statement is entirely against god it may sound religion religious but it is actually another gospel it is demonic if what i will show you there that already in christ god already forgave you your sin so he is not about to but if i tell you god will forgive your sin tomorrow god, or god will forgive your sin and you say amen that actually i just lied against god to your hearing and if you hear it for a long time you are going to believe error in the name of the truth because god has already what he has forgiven so your work should be to receive forgiveness by saying i am forgiven then make repentance change your mind which will lead to a change of action which is conversion so that place says god has delivered please look up look up if you have not understood this position that god has delivered then devil will play with your life forever he will he will trouble you forever one day years ago i was in the dream and i was going through a lonely part in that dream and uh, while i was going that lonely part i saw a sister i knew she was following me at the back very far distance but i was just going on my own suddenly at the middle of the road i saw a giant beast when i mean a giant beast as large as this building and that building that giant that giant i saw stood on the path across the road everybody ran away nobody was going through that path and i was alone on that path once i came closer to that giant to pass the thing roared like and shook the air shook the forest shook the way everywhere raised his voice like a dragon opened his mouth it was fire coming out very large gigantic structure so to say and i look at that beast and i says i am a new creation in christ we fear nobody once i mentioned that the demon because a spirit just said mm, and cleared out of the way and for me to pass i waited for that lady sister i knew to join me and i passed and she passed with me because they also they already know that they have nothing in common with us but they use fear and intimidation to keep us stranded so you see you shall know the truth and the truth once you know it will do what make you free it will do what make it will do what make it will do what make you free which means the making free is connected to your knowing the making free is not connected to praying it is connected to what it is after the knowing or in the knowing that praying will follow if you don't have a knowing and you are praying you may end up compounding the interest of ignorance so don't compound the interest sit down to know something then from that know you pray or act can i hear you say amen? amen he has delivered us that word delivered is the word rumor he in greek it means he rushed into the territory where we were kept captives he took us to himself in christ the word translated is the word metistami is to know it means he permanently relocated us out of that territory into the territory of his dear son so i am no longer located in satan's territory i am located in christ's territory so if you want to see my the real me don't look for me in the marine kingdom because it is impossible for you to see me there and if you see anything that resembles him it's a familiar spirit 
because it is impossible for you to see me there. I'm not saying I'm not missing what. If you ever dream and saw me in in under any water in a, in any kingdom or marine kingdom, it cannot be me because I am metistami istano. It means I have been relocated permanently. And so I cannot be here permanently and still be somewhere else. But devil can manipulate your mind. That's what is called soul dissipation. Devil can actually, because of your own renewed mindset, take picture of your mind of your mind. The psalmist says, He restored my soul. So somebody's soul or mind could be dissipated. What I mean by dissipation is it could be shared into different places at the same time. That one is a function of the soul or the mind, not of the spirit. My spirit being is forever in God's kingdom. But if my soul has not been renewed with the right knowledge, so that all the dissipated parts will be dislodged. The psalmist says he restored it. He restored it. So anywhere you see, Seven, it possibly set and said they tied you under the river or they tied you somewhere in a forest. It is not your spirit because your spirit man has become one with Christ. And so to invoke you, put up first Corinthians 6 17. If you are listening, it says, I am already delivered. That's why you cannot hear this message for any person, they need to hear it for themselves. You may pray for them, but you can't hear for them. First Corinthians 6 17. And he, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Read it louder. Oh, that word join is a word kolao in Greek. It means he that is cemented together with the Lord. That is to say. The Bible said that there you got born again. God who took your spirit, having removed the old man, took his own spirit, joined them together, mixed and mingled your spirit with his own spirit that they are one, inseparably one. Okay, look up, look up here, look up here, look at me. Do you see my shirt? How many colors do you see there? Two colors, white and light blue or what light ash whatever okay i'm not good at color so i don't guess but i know white anything you call the other one it answers to it <laughs> but you see these two things are already mixed inseparable if you want to remove this white from this shirt what will happen to this shirt what will happen to this shirt you destroy it if you want to remove the other color from the white, what happens to it? The same way these two colors are mixed and mingled together is the same way my spirit and the Holy Ghost are mingled together. That if you want to invoke me, you end up invoking us. So if God says, I have delivered and translated, it means you cannot see God and me together in the other kingdom. But the soul that is not renewed, the pictures and the imaginations of those souls could be located at different places. That is why the mind renewal is important. As you renew your mind, you are saving your soul with the engrafted word. Can I hear you say amen? amen? And it is as you do that, you begin to renew your mind, then you begin to enjoy what you already possess. Because the only gateway out of this for the spirit man to manifest what he carries is through the soul, through the mind. But if the mind is already blocked with a wrong belief system, wrong notions, or total ignorance, that total ignorance or wrong information becomes the blockade. So that when the spirit wants to move out of the soul, through the soul, to affect your body and the environment, because of the blockades, it will stop it. And so you have been delivered and you have been translated now what it means is he didn't only take you away from the territory of darkness he didn't only remove you from that territory of darkness he took you away also from their authority 
by destroying their authority over you. Jesus did not only remove Satan's authority and kept it somewhere. He destroyed it. So witches don't have authority over you. They don't, power, occultists don't have authority over you. It's not that we are, we are praying and we are saying, God, can you not now? That prayer is actually a prayer based on ignorance. In fact, in a case of ignorance, because it's a case of ignorance. So tell your neighbor, stop that kind of prayer if you are involved. Authority of an open sushi and manapi authority. You see, they make it 21 days on 21 days praying and the seven days on night. Ebana no nike. The devil does not have the authority you want to collect from him. Jesus already collected it from him. He is only using our ignorance as his authorization to affect us. That is why you need to know better. So I am delivered, I am translated. And that is who you are. You are free. You are not in the territory of wizards. You are not in the territory of witches. You are not in the territory of charm makers. You are not in the territory of wickedness. You have been delivered and permanently relocated. Bring your mind back to where you are and say, I have occupied. I have occupied. I am occupying until he returns. I am not down. I am up forever. You bring your mind back until your mind returns. Because nature is a gay for apple. Macabo no for apple. What can you be a different response altogether? Can I hear you say amen? amen? That is why sometimes we don't pray largely God bring you out because Omar bring it out. It's just like you telling God, bring that the God's power, bring that the God's power back to us. I am standing here preaching and you are praying, God, bring that the God's power back. Bring him back from London. Bring him back from London. God will ask you, which that the power are you referring to? Because the person you are asking God to bring back to you is standing where? Before you. He is standing before you and asking God to bring me back. And that prayer will not be answered because what you are asking for will not happen because it has happened. Bringing your mind back helps you to cancel that prayer point. So that you pray too long even though you are wrong, does not mean that God has answered your prayer. So it's not praying too long. It is praying intelligent prayers. Can I hear you say amen? amen. It is praying wisely. So matter is ended. You are free. Amen. I say you are free. Amen. So if you sleep and the witches show up and say, oh, they are troubling you and uh, it appears no rest. Get up and laugh. I remember years ago, witches troubled me. One night I was so much bewitched that I was learning this truth newly. I just got up. I started laughing. I sat down. I said, it is time to do warfare. And what, what was my warfare? To laugh. No, no. Watch another time, but I said, hey, hey. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> so you want to bring my mind out from where I am. To me, for me to start struggling to come to where I am. <laughs> I said, I will never ask you not to come because you cannot come. Remember, they came, but I was using a higher wisdom. <laughs> I operated it for some days and they discovered that I wasn't just making a prayer point. I have come to a knowing it ended. Because you shall come to a knowing and that knowing will make you free and I, I do not boast I do not boast in my flesh I boast in what I know in Christ there is no marine kingdom be it as a wine or witch that will say God's power we will not be free until you settle our grandfathers and because your great grandfather worship us and they made a vow that devil is a mad devil because in the first place you are the ones owing me Put up Isaiah 40 from verse 1 to 2.
today is your day of celebration. I say today is your day of celebration. Let this word, let this word gain entrance into your heart. Isaiah 4 from verse 1. This is Messianic chapter. It was, it, it, it was written on account of what Jesus has done prophetically. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, says the Lord. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. And cry unto her. This is because of what Jesus was coming to do, which he has done. Cry unto her. One, that her warfare is accomplished. Did you see that? That what is accomplished? Her warfare is what? Accomplished. And that her iniquity is pardoned. That her sins are what? So, will God forgive you? Will God forgive you? Will God forgive you? Good. Has God forgiven you or will God forgive you? Wow. Your warfare is accomplished. If your warfare is accomplished, are you still having warfare to fight and conquer Satan? It's accomplished. Iniquity pardon. For she has received of the lost hand double for all her sins. She received of the lost hand what? Double. Double. Look up. When Jesus was actually paying, because Jesus paid, get, get 1 Timothy 2, verses 5 and 6. Tell your neighbor, I am already delivered. Do you believe that? Yes. You are. You are. Don't use your experience to interpret the world. Use the world to interpret your experience. Then end the experiences you don't like. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Now, verse 6. This Jesus gave himself a ransom to be testified in this season. Now, listen to this version. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. By giving his life for all mankind, this is the message that at the proper time, God gave to the world. What is the message? That Jesus gave himself as your payment. He gave himself as your ransom to purchase your freedom. But he did not pay once. He paid double. So which means Christ suffered double of what we were meant to suffer once. If I am meant to pay one million, Jesus came and paid how much? If I am meant to carry one bag of cement, Jesus came and carried how many? If I am meant to walk one mile, Jesus came and walked how many miles? And so when Jesus met Satan and all the kingdom, because the wages of sin is death. So Jesus was paying for us. He was paying for us. So when he wanted to pay, instead of giving one bag of cement, which was the repayment, he gave two times, two, two bags. So if, if you are owing somebody one million, and another person comes and sign a check of two million, or you give the man cash two million, have you paid the man double? Yes. So who is owing who? So you are the one to go after him to bring the overpayment. So, but because we lack knowledge, they still come after us and say, come and settle what your grandfather did. But Jesus paid double for what my grandfather did. He paid double. So you are the one to give me the overpayment. You are the one owing me. You are one million. You are the so make sure that you will have the God to return. And yet, they still have the God to return. No wonder God is watching and saying, what happened to my people? So if somebody tells you, I can make sure you finish. You no, know, Jesus paid to wise for Ogo Kogo. One million. As soon as you have the higher, Jesus will be a quote two. Nizia himself, the highest. 
So nobody can, nobody can come and say, I will finish you. Finish you for what? Return to the finished work. If you leave the finished work, you expose yourself. Don't ever try it. Get back to finished work. You must go back to what Jesus has done. Now, let me show us this after you re read it on your own. Okay, I have to. Let me read it. I think, let me know. Get Numbers 35. Let me see if I'm right. Numbers 35. Get me from verse 25. Let me see. Tell yourself, I'm delivered already. If they said there's a wine, hey, hey, your mother did there's a wine. Your papa, your papa was a witch doctor and no marage on that. Oh, I wish believers will come to know this truth and start and start getting and start committing themselves to, to things ignorantly. Uh, even some people will tell you, We don't get Caesar, even pastors, we don't get Onye, we don't get Jesus, Megan. It's a prophetic prophetic word based on ignorance yes please listen to this go back to verse let me see verse 22 okay go back to verse 20 I want us to get the idea of what I'm trying to do So if someone hits another person and pushes him or throws a dangerous object at him and he dies, it is a murder. Or if someone hits another person and hits him with a fist and he dies, it is a murder. In such cases, the avenger must be, the avenger must put the murderer to death when they meet. This is one of the laws of Moses. The avenger must put the murderer to death when they meet. But suppose someone pushes another person without having shown previous hostility or throws something that unintentionally hits another person or accidentally drops a huge stone on someone. Though they were not enemies and the person dies, if this should happen, the community must follow these regulations in making a judgment between the slayer and the, the avenger. The victim's nearest relative is called the avenger, yes. The community must protect the slayer from the avenger and must escort the slayer back to live in the city of refuge to which he fled. There he must remain until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the sacred oil but if the slayer the one that ran into the city of refuge running from the avenger of blood because he killed somebody unintentionally if that slayer ever leaves the limit of the city of refuge that he walks out of the city of refuge what happens and the avenger finds him outside the city and kills him it is not considered to be murder why the slayer should have stayed inside the city of refuge until the death of the high priest but after the death of the high priest the slayer may return to his own property these are legal requirements for you to observe from generation to generation wherever you may live now the point i want to raise here if somebody hits somebody and uh, out of hostility he kills the person is a murder make sure that the person that killed him the murderer must be killed because the only way to cleanse the land from murder is to shed the blood of the murderer put put the last verse there that's numbers 35. get me verse 35 and 35 let me see you must not def okay you must not defy the land where you live for i live there myself i am the lord who lives among the people of israel now listen to this that's the verse okay get me verse 32 and 33 
can never accept a ransom from someone who has fled to a city of refuge allowing a slayer to return to his property before the death of the high priest don't ever release him he must be in that city of refuge if he wants to give money for him to be bare say don't collect any money let him remain inside the city of refuge because he is a slayer of a man's life so let him remain inside don't let, use money to release him because money is not designed for that verse 33 now listen to that this will ensure that the land where you live will not be polluted for more that pollutes the land and no sacrifice except the execution of the murderer can purify the land from murder anywhere in Ibu Mado, anywhere they keep people the only way to clean the land of murder is to get the murderers slay them spill their own blood then the land will be cleansed and if that be the case then everybody should get ready to die in one way or the other that was why jesus came since the only way to purify the land is to kill the murderer jesus now said i am giving myself in exchange as a substitute as a ransom for everybody who is guilty of death i am taking that place and i am dying for them so jesus has already died for everybody anybody now who believes in jesus god will consider him not a murderer in the first place he didn't kill any person and there's no punishment waiting for him because somebody called jesus has taken the punishment of that sin can i hear you say amen, amen. but where i want to touch is what the bible says that them will pray it says if any person slays somebody unintentionally and the person runs to the city of refuge say tell that person to stay there you shouldn't allow the avenger of blood to get at him or at her because he did it unintentionally however nobody should accept any ransom or money on account of the manslayer he should stay in that city of refuge as long as the high priest of that year is still alive if the high priest is not dead let the man stay inside but if the high priest eventually dies the man is free to be released and to return to his house which means it is the longevity of the high priest that determines the security of the culprit it is the longevity of the high priest that determines the security of the culprit any person who is a criminal in the city of refuge as long as the high priest is alive that person should be kept alive however please pay attention if that man leaves the city of refuge and he leaves the city of refuge and the avenger of blood finds him on the road and kills him god says it is not a murder they ask him why he said who told him to leave the city of refuge ebon achose whatever he wants they should bring it to him inside there so the only security you have is your city of refuge now this is referring to old testament patterns and pictures now what about the new now that the high priest determines if the high priest is alive then the man in the city of refuge is kept alive nobody should touch him unless if he moves out of the city of refuge anything maria noyanisi get hebrew chapter 7 from verse 11 tell yourself again three times i am delivered already okay now it says so if the priesthood of levi on which the law was based could have achieved the perfection god intended why did god need to why did god need to establish a different priesthood with a priest in the order of Melchizedek instead of the order of levi and aaron yes and if the priest is changed if the priesthood is changed the law must also be changed to permit it yes for the priest we are talking about belongs to a different tribe 
whose members have never served at the altar as priests. What I mean is this. Our Lord came from the tribe of Judah. And Moses never mentioned priests coming from that tribe. This change in priesthood has been made very clear since a different priest who is like Melchizedek has appeared. Just because Jesus became a priest so we now have a priest. Jesus became what? A priest. Not by meeting the physical requirement of belonging to the tribe of Levi, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. And the psalmist pointed this out when he prophesied, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. If you are understanding, say amen. amen. It's okay. Yes, the old requirement about the priesthood was set aside because it was weak and useless. For the Lord never made anything perfect. But now we have confidence in a better hope through which we draw near to God. This new system, this new one, was established with a solemn oath. Aaron's descendant became priest without such an oath. And there was another oath regarding Jesus. For God said to him, The Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vow. You are a priest forever. For how long? Because of this oath that Jesus is a priest forever, Jesus is the one who guarantees this better covenant with God. There were many priests under the old system for death prevented them from remaining in the office. But because Jesus lived forever, his priesthood lasts forever. Please look up. In the Old Testament, as long as the priest is alive, the man who ran into the city of refuge is kept safe. But because the priest, they will live and die, live and die. Anytime he dies, the man is released. But Jesus became a priest, not temporarily, but forever. So our priest is alive for how long? And we who are in the city of refuge are saved for how long? Forever. If you move out of the circle of the finished work, you expose yourself. Anything that happens to you when you leave the city of refuge, the Bible says if anybody kills you, God will not hold the person accountable. They ask him why. He said, Who told you to leave the city of refuge? Is the high priest alive? They say, You say, Stay inside. Tell your neighbor, Stay inside. Say, Neighbor, Stay inside. Stay inside. Don't leave, don't, don't abandon the finished work. Jesus is your finished work. Jesus is our high priest. He lives forever. He lives forever. And we are in him, our city of refuge. Our city of refuge. I am delivered forever. The avenger of blood will not locate me. Witches will not locate me. Wizards will not locate me. Why? One, I am in the city of refuge. Two, my high priest is alive forever. <laughs> I am in the city of refuge. And my high priest is alive forever. And because he lives forever, I am eternally defended. In one one happen a city of refuge, he come out of here. My name one one put out from the city of refuge. He made a gaka haka I'm at the person down. Who told you? Tell your neighbor who told you to leave the city of refuge. You abandon the finished work and enter just into prophecy and expose yourself. You abandon the finished work and entered into all kinds of prayer, useless, senseless prayer. And you left the finished work. No wonder you expose yourself to all kinds of witchcraft. No wonder. God tells you, I have forgiven you. You say, how? How? You left the city of refuge of forgiveness and entered into another city. You are going to struggle with quarreling with your conscience and Satan. And are going to keep you in bondage. If you do anything wrong, own up. Doesn't reduce you. Own up. The more you cover it, the more you harden your heart. Own up. And uh, when you own up, accept it is wrong. 
but don't live in that city of guilt because you are in the city of refuge am i communicating you must know it is forgiven you must accept it is wrong then do repentance change of mind and have conversion they continue your life don't let any person you see god forgave you but you refuse to be honest to forgive yourself so you are not keeping yourself in bondage i'm in the city of refuge you can't you can't you can't go lamogo you can't tell mamosu you can't tell mamaba because he that keepeth Israel does not sleep. And that is my priest who lives forever. Charms are not boy or boy. Boy, or. if you understand this, anytime they mention your name and they project charm, because you are in a city of refuge, the wall of that city does not permit charms. It's not a prayer point, it is our location. We were born into that city. All you need to do is to renew your mind and return to your territory in your mind where your spirit man is. Can I hear you say amen? amen. That's why that prayer point you have in your hand has been answered. Amen. That prayer point in your hand has been answered. Amen. How did I know? One, you are in the city of refuge. Two, your high priest lives forever. Amen. And because of that, you are secured with your answers. Amen. I have a high priest that is alive forever. <laughs> Stand to your feet, everybody.